Hi. In this uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at um, at working with um, with a noisy piece of footage. You can see this uh, this image is particularly noisy. You can see it more in the in the sky. Uh, there is actually a scratch on this image, which is uh, which we won't deal with in this tutorial, but we'll look at that uh, possibly in a in a separate uh, in a separate tutorial. Okay, so noise a term originally derived from uh, digital photography to describe this visual uh, this visual uh, distortion, um, which looks very similar to grain that you would typically find in film photography. Uh, it can also look like sort of splashes of discoloration, and and those can be quite destructive uh, when they're extensive and can actually ruin a photograph. Uh, certainly, in uh, if they're uh, if they're found in uh, in a piece of video footage, it's quite a painstaking roto paint operation to actually clean that up. Okay. I think it's fair to say that, um, that the best way of dealing with noise is to prevent it in the first place, um, which it, which you would do from uh, with uh, by controlling, getting better control of the camera and better control of the light that exists within your shot. Uh, but in, obviously, in uh, in digital post production, you invariably don't have any control over the production process, so you're basically working with what you've got. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start by adding a denoise node into this. The first thing that comes up is this red nag, um, and this is basically telling me to it's, it's it's telling me to do something with the analysis region. Uh, really, it's telling me to either press the lock noise to to disable it or to actually move it into a place which is actually going to sample the image and then try to soften and remove some of the noise one thing that is interesting about this is that the 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 node has actually analyzed the clip uh, generally speaking the uh, by the uh, by the resolution and dimensions of the clip and it's determined that the analysis region should be what's this round about maybe 80 90 pixels by 80 90 pixels so it's determined that that range of pixels will be required to deal with this uh, deal with the noise in this particular image anyway I'm going to bring this up to an area where the pattern is pretty constant so I'm going to come into this area where the uh, where the road is okay and set it there okay let's let's just zoom in a little and just toggle this on and off okay you can already see that this straight out of the bag has made quite a bit of difference if we play the clip again it's going to need to spend a couple of moments caching okay but you can see quite a bit different if I turn it off by comparison and just let it cache again you can see how noisy the image was prior to the filter being applied so let's just turn this back on again and let it run through so much better already but we'll just uh, just come up round about to that frame because that was where we that was where the noise seemed pretty constant before and what we'll do now is we'll take a look at some of the parameters so starting with the source, you can see that we've got two options. We've got film or digital. Okay, um, essentially noise in these capture formats has a different frequency, and so the choice sets up the initial algorithm. Film suitable for most shots, but increasingly rushes are being captured uh, directly in digital format. So if they're being captured in digital format with uh, you know in maybe poor lighting conditions, then uh, then you may need to alter this to uh, to digital. Okay, but I'm going to leave this set to film. Okay, the next option is the noise, and again there are two options. There's modulated and constant. Um, modulated is okay for most shots. You can try out constant in situations where the shot has a lot of detail and probably not much noise in the dark areas. Bear in mind that the that the source and the noise model are interlinked. So if you've chosen digital as your source. Then, um, then you would usually need to choose the constant noise model, um, to, and, and especially if there isn't too much noise in the light areas of their image. Okay, but I'm going to leave this in the default film and modulated before moving on. Okay, I'll just bring this down so 
I think I don't really need to add to the no to the node tree, but I just need to uh, make more access to the actual uh, denoise parameters. So we'll we'll uh, we'll work like this. Let's take a look at this luminance blend. This essentially works by blending the denoise luminance with the original luminance from the shot. So essentially it's used to bring back some of the image detail in the result. So for example, if I take the luminance blend and give it some ridiculous value, let's say 20, because that's maybe a little bit too much, it's difficult to see. And you kind of see what's happening here. You get this sort of embossed area where it's trying to bring back detail from the from the result after the noise has, has sort of removed some of the detail from the from the image. Okay, so we get this so uh, we get this sort of slightly ugly ugly look. But at, but at least you can see what it's trying to do. It's trying to bring back some of the luminance that's been faded out. Now I'm just going to set that back to its original point 7. And we'll take a look at the sharpen now. The sharpen by default is set to zero. So essentially at zero it means it's actually performing no sharpening whatsoever. But if I if I type in a really high value, let's try 100. Okay, then what we're doing now is we're telling it to um, we're telling it to to sharpen the image by a really high amount. So all the pixels that are in the roll-off area are affected by that. You can see if you hover over this, then and you, this applies for all the parameters. If you hover over them. Then it um, it gives you a little bit of a tooltip which tells you how the um, how the how the, uh, the the parameter is working. And in this particular case, we are actually affecting the roll-off threshold. And because we've set it to 100, then then we're we're actually maximising a lot of pixels because we we're, we're setting a lot of pixels to above that threshold. And of course, here is our roll-off. So at the moment, the roll-off setting is. Um, is at its default value of 2 but obviously we can now change the roll of threshold so as we increase that then we bring down that noisy effect caused by the sharpening and the same goes for the um, for the denoise amount we can also use that so we can scrub that back and forth and you can see that if we take this right down to a value of 0 there's absolutely no denoise being applied so we retain more of our image information essentially it puts the shot back to as it was before we started and of course the more we raise it up then the more information essentially gets lost because we're, we're effectively adjusting we're, we're effectively over blurring the image Okay, so I'll set the roll off back to about two, which is where it was originally, and I'll set the um, I'll set the denoise amount to give it give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of value. Maybe so let's just say one point two. Okay, we can still see that we've got far too much much in the sharpening. Okay, so we'll just bring the sharpening back down to some sensible level. Let's try something about point, point 0.2 and we'll just increase our roll off a little bit more. And we should have a fairly nice denoised effect. There's still a couple of flashes there that would probably need to be painted. But we've certainly got a uh, We've certainly got a, a, a denoised effect compared with, as you can see there. There's the there's the original. If I just uh, sorry, if I just if I just pause this for a second and we just turn this on and off, we can see the difference, quite marked. Okay, so for most of the things that you do with denoising, you can probably achieve the results that the best possible results that you have to with using these parameters but it is worth me just mentioning these little drop downs here the tune frequencies and and the tune channels um, because you can get pretty complex and mathematical when you're dealing with with uh, noise removal solutions and certainly people that deal with this uh, professionally um, would be uh, particularly noise specialists would certainly uh, be using uh, using these and the mathematical mathematical algorithms that exist within them. I'm not going to actually go into those, but I would refer you to the Foundry's website because they have a couple of very um, 
uh, they, they, have, they have two tutorials on noise uh, removal and one and the second one actually goes into how you can um, goes in on how you can improve a solution using these frequencies and the channels so I, I'll it's beyond the scope of this tutorial but I will signpost you to those because they uh, they delve into this in a, in a lot greater detail anyway hope you found that useful that's the end of the exercise